Now I got another fun pattern for you today. This one's a true classic. I think you're gonna like it. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So imagine this, two brothers run a barber shop in Traverse City, Michigan on Front Street in the early 1900s. The brothers were Bert and Art Winnie, both avid fishermen. The barber shop is said to have been a haven for fishermen of the area. And Bert was pretty much a lure maker, but Art was a fly tire. Now he came up with several patterns that got pretty popular in the early 1900s, but probably his most popular one was called the Michigan Hopper. Now he created this pattern sometime between the early 1920s and 1940, but it really got popularized when Joe Brooks started fishing it and writing about it. Now from what I can tell, Joe changed it up just a little bit and wrote about it so much that folks just started calling it Joe's Hopper, and that's pretty much what we know the flyby today. It was also said that this was the first dry fly to use a turkey feather for the wing. And speaking of that, one thing I probably should have done that I didn't do in the tie you're about to see is put a little bit of lacquer on the turkey wing. It would have certainly made it a little bit stiffer and probably helped me get it to lay a little flatter. But overall, it's not a hard pattern to tie. It's certainly a lot easier than Dave's hopper. I mean, this thing has no legs. But it's still a cool fly and truly an old classic. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a Joe's Hopper. Common sizes for this, pretty much whatever you tie your hoppers on. I'm gonna tie it on a size 10. And I'll tell you about this hook I'm using in just a second. Let's go ahead and pinch this barb right here. That didn't get it. That did. This is an all-purpose curve shank hook. This is a J Stockard, their model 430. And I use this all the time. They make them as big as a four at least, and as small as a 22. And I tie all my hoppers on this all-purpose curve shank hook, lots of streamers, and in the small sizes, I tie plenty of nymphs. So let's put a base of black thread down to where that barb used to be. And red hackle fibers, this is just cheap strung saddle hackle. I'm gonna grab about 15 or so of them and I'm gonna make it pretty long. So let's go about right there. One thing to keep in mind, if you do use these curve shank hooks, telling material will tend to point down. So I will do this little trick of lifting it up. And just giving it a quick little prop up right there. I think it's gonna look a little bit better. Now you could go ahead and snip these if you want or just use that as part of your underbody. So I'm going to do some loose wraps right here just to keep this, uh, you know, give me a little bit more bulk up here in my underbody. I'm going to have to snip a few of these right here though. All right, that's fine. Now let's take our thread back and before we do our body, we are going to rib this with a palmered brown hackle. So just a real small one and this one you want it to be really no bigger than the hook gap so I think this feather right here is about the right size and I will prepare it kind of like if I was just tying a regular collar hackle. So I stripped off some of that. I've got that bare stem right there. Okay. Now I can just bury that or snip it whatever you want to do. Now let's take our thread back and put some wax on it. So I believe the original pattern did call for a yellow wool, and I have some yellow wool, but I like my dry flies with a synthetic body, so I'm just using this acrylic yarn that I'd cut up and put in my coffee grinder. It doesn't dub as smoothly as wool, but it's a lot more water repellent and will help your dry fly stay dry. So let's put a noodle, maybe three inches. We'll see how far that'll get us. Might have to do two applications to get up there you know, almost to the, the front of the fly. Yep, I'm gonna need just a little bit more. All right, I got a little lump in there, but you know what, I can live with that. So let's just go ahead and palmer this up. 
I'm gonna counter wrap it. I'm not doing too many, maybe five wraps on this size 10. You know what, I need to go one more so I have a better tie off point. And let's do a few wraps right here just to get us a little bit flatter area where we're gonna catch in this turkey wing. Now I'm using an Ozark. This is a dark brown turkey. If you've never used this stuff right here, check it out. It's really cool, has a nice look. I think it's a little bit nicer looking than the regular old light brown mottled turkey. And I'm gonna catch them in one at a time because I want them kind of on the side. And a lot of people will, will trim that top but I'm not gonna do that. I want these to be on a little bit on the side and a little bit flared out. So I'm gonna do tip up and kind of right here on the side. That's gonna help them flare out on me. So let's just catch this one in. The loose pinch wrap right there. And then another wrap, see how it looks. Okay, that might be a little higher than I want, but I think we're gonna be fine. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side right here. Just try to get the links the same. Okay, they are about the same. Now, is there anything I can do to get these laying a little bit flatter? Maybe. I can possibly pull them down and then put some medium wraps right here. Okay, that got them a little bit lower. I think we're fine right there. Now I can just go ahead and put some tighter wraps right here going forward. And I'm gonna snip these off as close as I can get them. And I'll tell you why. Because we're wrapping a hackle up here and if you end up with a big lump, it's gonna be harder to wrap that hackle. So I'm gonna spend a few extra thread wraps just to try to smooth out this little area right here where I'm gonna be wrapping this hackle. Okay, that's probably smooth enough. So now, brown and grizzly dry fly hackle. And this one, you want it to be sized to match the hook. So for this, you know, this is a size 10. Hopefully I measure it right and these barbs coming out are going to be about one and a half times the hook gap. So let's see that. Got two wraps right there. Okay. I'm going to switch hands and then put, well not yet. Let's go ahead and lock these in going forward. Now I can put one wrap behind these to really lock them in. Just be careful with my wing right there. I don't want to mess that up too much. Okay, now take a look at this. If I cut that, those stems off right there, I'm gonna create a little lump. So I'm just going to catch them in almost up here to the eye. Now I can bend them up and snip them off. And by doing that, it might help us keep a smoother head. So a few extra wraps just to bury those nubs right there and leave my thread back from the eye a little bit. That's about where I'm gonna stop wrapping my hackle and then catch these off. And that will leave me a little bit of room up here for the head. Okay, now I should have mentioned you can wrap these one at a time. And you might want to do that if they start splitting up on you. Or if you're just, you know, get lazy, you can probably get away with wrapping them both at the same time. But that one wasn't necessarily working on me, for me. So I'm gonna wrap them one at a time. Then I'll snip them off both at the same time. Okay, that was about four wraps of this brown. Let's go ahead with two thread wraps to catch this guy off. Now I'm gonna wrap this one. I might have to zigzag it through just a little bit. And at least about the same. Three, maybe four wraps if I can get them without crowding my eye up here. Okay, let's go ahead and catch this off. So now I've got two wraps securing that grizzly and four wraps on that brown. 
Now here's something I do with a lot of my dry flies. Before I snip those off, I will pull it back and then work on my head, but I'm not gonna do that in this case because I might end up with too much bulk under my thread head and then it's just gonna be an ugly head. So let's go ahead and snip these off before we work on our head. Now we can do that. We can just pull these back and there we go. Our head isn't getting too big on us. Might be a little bit bigger than I like, but I'm fine. Got room for a whip finish right here. Now let's take a look. Do we have any cleanup? Nah, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement on it and call this guy done. So there you go, everybody, a Joe's Hopper. Not a real complicated pattern, but there's a lot going on, so it does take a little while. But I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.